The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are our uh, last team of the evening to preview. And uh, this team on offense, we talked earlier on in the show about the injuries that they're battling. Chris Godwin obviously hurt. Russell Gage hurt in practice. Their center, Ryan Jensen, gone. Battling a lot. There's a lot. But with all of it being said, Chris Godwin has to be one of the biggest players on this offense that's go- that's battling and dealing with an injury. Aaron, I'm, I'm going to give you two questions, and I'm not going to give them to you as a double barrel. I'm going to go one by one here. Two questions, offense. What is Chris Godwin's status right now? What is it looking like? When's he coming back? What's the expectations for him when he, when we can see him uh, back on the field? Uh, first off, the injury, I, I'm very encouraged by what we've seen. He's already back in practice. And although he hasn't participated in full speed 11-on-11 reps, the main thing I look for when we're dealing with an ACL injury is cutting. Right. It's can a receiver get in and out of breaks? And he's been doing a lot of that at full speed, which is good. That's the first thing I'm looking for is can he get in and out of breaks? He's been running routes. He's been working in individual drills. And that's big for overcoming that mindset of can I still do the things that I used to do? And I I watched some video of him. He looked good doing it. Did it look like maybe he's at 100 percent? No, but I don't need him to be at 100 percent week one of preseason. So. That was encouraging. Um, That's the biggest thing I was looking for. And I think so far in camp, he's trending in the right direction. He's not a guy that you have to rush back into preseason because he needs reps. He just needs to feel 100% confident that his knee is not going to give out when he wants to do something. A lot of times ACL, it's about here. It's about getting over that mental hurdle. And I think getting out there and running routes and cutting, I think that's the first step in getting over that. I think he's done a good job of that. With him coming back early on in the season, what does the wide receiver group as a whole look like with Godwin there back, coming back from injury, Evans there being the consistent Mike Evans that he always is, Russell Gage, Julio Jones now there. What does the receiver position look like for? It's an embarrassment of riches, especially oh, yeah. for a guy like Tom Brady, who's 45 years old, who came from a New England system that – had guys that you couldn't even name, Nikhil Harry, and you know, all these guys. Who's the guy? Again, I keep Jacoby Myers. He doesn't score touchdowns, and all these guys. And now you get to go to a room where, oh, Godwin's hurt, but I got Mike Evans. Oh, uh, Russell Gage goes down. Oh, well, I get a, a veteran like Julio Jones. And even though I've talked about him being old, like just to have that guy in your locker room as a presence in the wide receiver room is something special. It's an embarrassment of riches. And then you have Tom Brady. So I'm sorry, I'm not crying any tears for the Tampa Bay or wide receiver room about them falling down and getting injuries. Um, This team is going to be okay. Okay. They got Brashad Perriman who came in and made plays with Tom Brady, Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller. All these guys were on the field with Tom Brady at points of time, the last two seasons winning Super Bowl. So their, their receiver room is one of the deepest ones in the NFL. They will be fine. And Tom Brady is going to find a way to make it work. I have zero, zero, zero concerns about anything that's going on in that wide receiver room right now. You hear that, AJ? They have Scotty Miller. Scotty! Scotty, Scotty Miller. Good old oh, man. They do Scotty need a Miller. guy to bring some water. I mean, he's a pass catcher. <laughs> he's a pass catcher, unlike Brandon Bolden. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. oh, my goodness. Who also, right, who also just by the way, Scotty Miller taking Brady. running back reps. <laughs> 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 Let's go over the defensive side of the ball, AJ. What's the biggest question mark on this defense? It might feel like it's a cop out. It might feel like it's an easy answer. And it's the opposite of what Aaron was just talking about in the receiver room. And it's something I do have concern with for this defense. The only question mark I really have is can they stay healthy? This was the downfall of the Tampa Bay Bucks last year, was everybody was getting injured. They lost cornerback after cornerback after safety after cornerback. And you look at these guys now and they're healthy. I mean, you want to point to that offensive line? Why? Vita Veda Vita himself is knocking people left and right. You want to talk to the linebackers and the pass rushers? Aaron's guy, Joe Tryon, is turning it up, and everybody has nothing but great things to say about him. We know what Levante David's about. We know what Shaq Barrett is about. We know what JPP is about. The only thing that this defense makes that I have to worry about or is a question mark is can they stay healthy? We've already seen the issues on the offensive side of the ball and people going down. We already seen conditioning problems. Three guys now carted off because of cramps. Uh, they they just they just need to be able to stay healthy. They need to make sure these training regiments for this Bucks team is everything as perfect as it can be. Because if these offensive linemen keep going away, 
Tom Brady needs to be riding off into the sunset at the end of the year because he might die if he has no one to protect him. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> other than that, there's no questions about the talent. Uh, you know, I have all the faith in the world what Todd Bowles still wants to do with this defense, and uh, they're going to be good on paper. They just need to be able to be great on the field because they, the best ability is availability. Yeah, their their starting lineup on the defense is, is ridiculous to be honest. Stupid, if you just bro. look at their starters, <laughs> yeah. you're you're looking at the best defense in football. Like uh, that's not a that's not a hot take. We people forget they brought in Akeem Hicks, and I know he's a little bit older now, but he's one of the best defensive linemen in football. Yeah, um, and you go alongside of Vita Van. So uh, their defense is really really top heavy. And then it falls off dramatically. The backups just aren't good. Um, And AJ, you mentioned JPP. JPP is not on the Buccaneers anymore. So uh, I was scared to change any uh, any of my tabs because I don't want to freeze out. (laughs) (laughs) But but to your point, they have a ton of a ton of talent in their starting lineup. The problem is when they start to they start to go down. uh, There's not a lot of depth there. A lot of young guys with no experience. Don't yeah. play any of the starters in preseason is what we're getting at here, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Don't no, honestly, any- I disagree with that. I think they should play more. The part when you're cramping and you're getting these injuries, what do you think is going to happen week one when you go out there? If you haven't played, you're going to cramp and you're going to get these injuries. I, it's one of the biggest, like, we can go to this a whole other day, like miss numbers <laughs> about the NFL and people sitting out in preseason. Like, why do you think injuries happen week one? You're not conditioned. You haven't taken hits. You're not used to the contact or the physicality or being in a game. And you're dehydrated. Like all these things play a factor within injury. So it's important, like AJ said, to get their bodies right and make sure that they are ready for that grueling game in Tampa in September when it's 95 degrees but feels like 112 and mm-hmm. it's humid and they're not ready for that because in practice they were cramping. So the first game they're cramping. I, I think that's important for them. Okay, well, what do I know? What do, I, what do I know? Now the Sac City Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. The best men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, people. The performance package, the ultimate, ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 6 million worldwide who trust Manscaped with an exclusive offer. 20% off, free worldwide shipping with the code Sac City. If my math is correct, that's 12 million balls. And if you don't know about the performance package, the 4.0 performance package has arrived and it's a game changer. The lawnmower 4.0, the trimmer is the future of grooming and dare I say the greatest ball trimmer ever. Also included in there, you get the weed whacker, which is also waterproof. You get the, the ball deodorant, you get the, the manscape underwear, and you get a little newspaper to read while you're doing the business on the toilet. But make sure you go ahead and go to manscaped.com, get 20% off and free shipping with the code SAC City. What are you waiting for, people? Unlock your confidence. And as always, the right tools for your jewels with Manscaped. Uh, let's go over <laughs> the schedules now, though, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Aaron, where is the toughest stretch of games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Uh, let me get my let me get my handy dandy notebook out. Oh boy. <laughs> Um, the toughest stretch of games to me is the start of the season. I mean, look at the first four games at Dallas, at New Orleans, home to Green Bay, and at Can- or at home to Kansas City. Who wants to start the season that way? And I know Tampa's a good team. I think they'll get some wins there because they're a good team. But that's if we talked about gauging where you're at as the team. That's gonna be that's gonna be a spot there. Um, and then there's a middle part that I think is gonna be imperative. So the the start is tough. But I think the middle part between Cleveland, New Orleans, San Francisco, and Cincinnati, I think that's going to play a big role in where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finish in the NFC. And the NFC is wide open. But the more I look at this Tampa schedule, the more I don't like it as much. And I have Tampa, I have the Tampa Bay's record winning a lot of games. They're going to lose some games. And um, they're going to lose some games because that schedule is not as easy as I once thought it may, you know, have looked uh, seeing what everybody's kind of done now. So, um, but that four game stretch in the middle to end of, la- of next or of this season um, will ultimately decide whether Tampa Bay is fighting for a buy or if they are just getting in um, and having to go on the road in an NFC championship game or something like that. Yeah. I, I was like, I could ask the question of what's like the defining part of the season, but I'm looking at it. And I'm like, man, there are so many, it's like, but yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like everywhere, there's a lot, but also like 
They have that st- Dallas, New Orleans, Green Bay, Kansas City. All right, there's there's one stretch. Then you got Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Carolina. That stretch then that's that's a stretch of good easy games. Then you're back at it again for for two games against Baltimore and Los Angeles, and then you go Seattle and a bye. It's it's like it's broken up mm-hmm. into like there are just multiple stretches of hard, and then there's a, like little breaks in between of like okay we could have a cakewalk. But then we're right back at it again with the tough part of the schedule. They have six games that I can look at and say, oh, they're going to win. And, I mean, we cannot talk about division games. If, if I gave them both Atlanta and both Carolina games, like they have six games. Outside of that, every one of those games is losable. Every single one of those games, they, they can actually lose that game because those teams aren't just like – it's not the Vikings or these middle tier. Like these are what we consider to be top-notch competition yeah. right so um they got a tougher schedule than i originally thought it's going to be tough for them to to get to as many wins as i have them getting but uh, they might find a way they got tom brady. <laughs> yeah, yeah ever heard of him his name is tom brady this guy yeah. over here 45 years old guy um aj what are you looking out for during the regular season though for this tampa Bay buccaneers obviously with a very tough grueling schedule what's what are you actually keeping your eyes on for the bucks uh I'm looking at this uh, running back room. You know, there's some uh, early questions that I think will be given away uh, or be put to rest with Leonard Fournette, the way he showed up, and if he's going to get to where he needs to be. I imagine he's a consummate professional, and he will. Uh, But, you know, they also drafted uh, Rashad White, and uh, Keyshawn Vaughn has been a guy that they were very excited about, and part of the reason they left let Ronald Jones go. We know they like to have these guys running the ball. They know they like to rotate, so – I'm kind of wanting to have to see if there's another person that steps up behind Leonard Fournette or if they just run him into the ground again uh, with carries and reps. Uh, but, you know, there's there's a future to be had as well. So uh, I'm kind of looking to see what this running game does. We already know they've got receivers all over the world, and Tom Brady may go scorched earth again for the second year in a row. But uh, that's the interesting part for me. We already talked a little bit about the defense for me. So uh, we'll stick with the run game on this one. Oh, playoff Letty. Oh, let it. Yeah, I'm not watching anything. I'm not watching anything with the Bucks. I don't care. I'm beyond. I know we just <laughs> talked about the schedule. I don't care because at the end of the season, they're going to be in the playoffs. They're that good of a team, barring a Tom Brady injury. They're going to be in the playoffs, and every playoff game you're going to look at, no matter who they match up with, and you're going to say, "Yeah, Tampa Bay could win." So I'm only. I only care when we get to December, the end of December, and we're seeing where they're seated, and we're saying, "Are they going to have to go on the road? Are they going to be able to play at home? And who are they matched up against in the playoffs?" Is are they going to win or not? Like the regular season, this is one of those NBA teams. I'll be honest that I'm just looking at. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch them. Make sure they stay somewhat healthy. Don't lose any key pieces like Tom Brady or Tom Brady or Tom Brady because <laughs> if they have him, they'll be there. They're going to be in the playoffs. Like it's not, there's there's zero doubt that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be in the playoffs this season. So Who? Tom Brady, who the, the goat, Wayne Gabbert, the goat, and, and so oh, I don't hey. care. So I don't care. I, I don't. I they could go two and four to start the season, and I'm gonna go. Oh, doesn't matter. It'll be the same mindset that I had last year with Kansas City. To be honest, I'll, I'll be on. They could start slow. They could lose the first four games in that brutal stretch, and I will tell everybody just, just relax, chill out. They'll be fine. They'll That's get to the playoffs, thing. and they'll be fine. And the NFC is, to me, is not team. very strong. Relax. Like the, the NFC is the weaker conference. It's not very, it's not as strong. Um, I know there's some teams that are kind of up in the air, but the, the heavier competition to me is in the AFC. I think doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Nothing to watch for. Tom Brady. That's it. N- nothing to watch. Yeah. No, nothing to watch for. Nothing to watch for. Uh, let's go into the odds now for the, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The prop bets for Tampa look like this that I've listed over 11 and a half wins at plus 100. Tom Brady's stat here, I know it's like a lot of numbers right there, but I thought it was an interesting uh, bet there for Brady and his yards this season is 4,549 and a half yards over for Tom Brady at minus 115. And then over 10 and a half Mike Evans touchdowns at minus 115. Interesting. I feel like these are a little different than the Cowboys ones that we had before. It's a little more harder to lock in. Uh, AJ, I'll start with you here. Which one is your lock this season? Thought you would start with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we talk about all those weapons in the wide receiver room. 
Uh, and we just talked about that schedule. So that 11 and a five is looking kind of scary. Um, well, you know, you never know. I, I'm going to lock in the GOAT, Tom Brady, over 4,500 yards, 45, 49.5. Um, can we see back to back 5,000 yard seasons from the GOAT? Well, if these guys stay healthy and Ryan Hainsley don't get cramps and he can actually snap the ball to Tom Brady, sure. Why the hell not? <laughs> and all the people in the world throw the ball to. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with the Tom Brady over four five four nine point five. I love I love that pick uh, because I think that plays into the, the schedule talk. I think there's some good teams they're gonna have to score with. He's gonna throw the ball a lot because he's Tom Brady. I do think that is a lock, but I also I will take the other lock that I think here, and that's over ten and a half uh, touchdowns for Mike Evans. Um, Mike Evans <laughs> might be the most underappreciated wide receiver the NFL has ever seen. And I'm not joking when I say this. I was that guy. I was the guy that said Mike Evans wasn't going to be that good when he came out of Texas A&M with Johnny Manziel and all that. I was the guy that said Mike Evans can only go make big plays down the field. And yes, from a fantasy perspective, he's inconsistent at times because he has games where it's two catches for 13 yards. But let me say this again. Mike Evans might be the most underappreciated wide receiver in NFL history, not just in the NFL right now, in the NFL history. We look at guys like Devontae Adams, and we look at, oh, he's the best receiver in the NFL. Go compare the stats of Mike Evans to Devontae Adams. Tell you what, Mike Mike Evans are better. But we would never label Mike Evans as the best receiver in football. Maybe because it's not the eye test. Maybe because he doesn't do it with the pizzazz. But he's done it with guys like Jameis Winston and some other cornerbacks that we don't look at like an Aaron Rodgers. And now he has Tom Brady, who, again, is the GOAT throwing to him. Mike Evans might be the most underappreciated wide receiver in the NFL. 9,000 career receiving yards in in his first eight years. Never less than 1,000 yards receiving. Four times double-digit touchdowns. This dude is he's an automatic thing, automatic thing. Ten touchdowns for Mike Evans, three years straight, book it. Y'all know how I feel about Mike Evans, so I guess I'm not going to go that route. But Mike Evans is that dude, okay? That's uh, – that's, I, I, I mean, I'm, I said it. I said no, it. I, I – but but long ago – and I, I'm not No, 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 because you want to bring him up to Tyreek Hill. I still would take Tyreek Hill over Mike Evans. <laughs> this is the Devontae Adams argument. I'm not saying that I would take Mike Evans over Devontae Adams. I would take Devontae Adams over Mike Evans. But at what point, and I don't even want to run the risk of sounding like somebody on TikTok, but I did see something on TikTok where a guy came out and said, at what point does production come into the conversation about, like, when does production beat skill set and talent? You know what I mean? And Mike Evans yeah. may not be the most talented route runner or may not be the what Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill is from an electric standpoint. But at what point do we count production? And I think we're at that point with Mike Evans where the dude just comes in year after year after year and does the same thing. And it's not always pretty. It's not all. I don't want to compare him, but it's like Zeke. It's like when you look at the end of the season, the numbers are there. And you're like, man, Mike Evans didn't even, I don't even remember it being that good. But he's there every single year. He's consistent. And there's something to be said about that. He's very underappreciated. Yeah. I, hey, I was I was I was at that point two years ago with Mike Evans, where it's not just about the talent; it's about the consistency. It's it's he's Bro, truly special. It's, it's crazy. Not, yeah, it's 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 special. It we is call Cooper special. Cup the best receiver after one season, and Mike yeah. Evans has done it for nine straight or eight straight years, and he can't even be cracking the top five. Like, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. I take, and this might get me shot. This might this might get me shot by Leslie from Los Angeles. Is I take <laughs> what Mike Evans. Shit? I take Mike Evans over Cooper Cup. Sorry. Sorry. That's, that's, sorry. What are you sorry about? Ain't Listen. What are you sorry about? There, I, I can't say that I disagree with you. Like, I, like I, I get it. Cooper Cup, great, great route runner, great, great slot guy. Great. He's, he's great. He's fantastic. No, get this. Mike though. Evans just does it. Cooper Cup has 5,000 career yards and played five seasons. Mike Evans has 9,000, played eight seasons. Cooper Cup's older than Mike Evans. You're damn right I would take Mike Evans over Cooper Mm -hmm. Cup. Cooper Mm -hmm. Cup's almost 30. He got 5,000 career receiving yards, and we will label him the best receiver in football. And Mike Evans has done it for eight seasons, younger than him, consistent, 10 touchdowns every year. 
and yet he can't crack the top five. So it, it, it's mind blowing. Mad Dog called Cooper Cup a Hall of Famer the other day. Oh goodness gracious! That's <laughs> not, good. not good at all. Uh, all right, okay, we can wrap. <laughs> let's get into the predictions here. Let's get into our predictions and where they rank. Uh, what are you guys going with for the Bucks end of season record? AJ. Mm. I am also going eleven and six here. Uh, that, that schedule. I, I I I wanted to go higher. I I did. Uh, the Tom Brady of things. But man, look, it's it's to me, it's kind of like that whole the young bucks come in in the NBA and see LeBron. They ain't scared of LeBron. These guys nowadays, like they respect Tom Brady, but they ain't scared of Tom Brady and what he can do. They got here to play football one way or another. And there's some dogs on that schedule. There's some teams on that schedule. And I, I'm going to go with 11 and six just because, I mean, they are playing some talented, talented teams. Yeah. And, and not look, to mention, not to mention you have Atlanta beating them once. So we know that. Hey man, they did it last year. <laughs> See, oh, goodness gracious, well, they, they, they played great last yeah, year. I was gonna say they didn't beat last year, but I knew that. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I, I, I retracted. I retracted. I retracted. <laughs> so you got Aaron? Can, can you can you hold it up? Can you hold it up? This hold it. Yep. So the the paperwork that's in your hand. This is yep. the sheet that I made for you guys when I did my season prediction schedules on TikTok and stuff. And, I I don't change. And you had thirteen and four. Yes. AJ also had 13 and four. And this is not to say it's backtrack or whatever, but it's just it just goes to show how different that the this Bucks schedule and how their record could look with all these tough well, games that after free agency in the draft and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this yeah. was I I don't I this was people before going down, people retiring. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like this is I mean it's tough. It, it is tough. So Aaron, are you Going back on, so you said thirteen and a four during the off season. Where are you at? Yeah, now? it looks it, it looks a lot it looks a lot harder now to go thirteen and four, but I'm sticking with it. Um, when I look at some of these games that I think they can win. A lot of the games, like I told you, I'm big on home and road. I think teams that are really good usually win at home. Get the Kansas City games at home, Baltimore games at home, uh, Cincinnati games at home. I think those games can be games that they win. So I do have them losing four games to the Saints the second week of the season at New Orleans, Green Bay the Rams, and then at Cleveland with Deshaun Watson. I think that's going to be a tough game for them. Um, I have them going 13-4, and four and I will stick with that. Okay. All right. I I originally had them at 12-5. and five. I'm going to stay with that 12-5 and five record. Uh, not so bad of, a, of 11. Not to say 11-6 and six is bad, but not going back to 11-6 and six and not definitely not bumping up to 13-4. and four. I'll lock in 12-5 uh, and five for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Aaron, where do they rank? on our preseason power rankings. Yeah, a lot of this has to do with playing in the NFC. We, we mentioned the schedule could be tough, so they might be a little bit ranked higher than we we really thought maybe they should be. Um, they're number three. They're number three. So number three on our power rankings list is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I've seen them as low as like six and seven, mm-hmm. um, but I've also seen them as high as three and four. So uh, we locked them in at number three, Cowboys at number eight, and those are our two teams for today. Until- the preseason rankings are shaping – out shaping up for the Sac City podcast. Bucks at three, Cowboys now at eight. <laughs> <laughs>